Okay, so today I will show you how you can use Arduino to show the current gear for the manual transmission inside your car. And as I move the shifter handle, the lever to different positions, the OLED screen should show the current gear. And this is actually a very simple project, I would say perfect for beginners, because it's only using few components. All the code is running on this board, which is the Arduino Uno, and it's being connected to this OLED display showing the current gear. And it's calculating the current gear from four hole sensors, which are placed on this custom PCB. This PCB is manufactured by PCBWay, who is also a sponsor of today's video, but I will talk about them later in the video. For now, let's start simple and let's talk about the hole sensors. And that's this tiny little component. The hole sensor measures the magnetic field, and that's the reason why I have the magnet attached to the shifter handle. As I move the handle, the magnet also moves and it moves the magnetic field around. There are few types of hole sensors and they all react to the magnetic field in some way. This one that I'm using is called the analog hole sensor, meaning that if I provide the ground and 5 volts to this sensor, the output pin will report some value between 0 and 5 volts based on the magnetic field. Let's create a simple project using only one hole sensor and the Arduino Uno and see if we can measure the output. I will not start in the Arduino IDE, but rather in Wokwe, which is a free online Arduino emulator, because I can create a new project using the Arduino Uno by clicking this button. And then I have access to all the different sensors, but unfortunately the whole sensor is not there. But I think that what I can do is to use a standard potentiometer, because the potentiometer also have three different pins, being the ground that I will connect to ground, then the VCC which I will connect to 5 volts, and then we have the signal pin or the output pin. And as I rotate the potentiometer, the signal pin will go from ground all the way to VCC, so in a way it will work in a similar way as the whole sensor. Except of course we are not moving the magnet close to the whole sensor, but we are just rotating the potentiometer, but that should be enough for testing. So what I will do is I will connect the signal to one of the analog input pins on the Arduino Uno, those are the pins going from A0 all the way to A5, and I will probably go with A0. And then inside the code I want to set the pin A0 to be input by calling pin mode function and set the pin A0 to be input and then I want to read the value of the pin A0 inside the loop function and I will create a new variable of type integer for example name it all value and I want to read the value of pin A0 by calling the analog read function of the pin A0 and that will give us a value between 0 and 1023. I want to of course show the value and for now the serial monitor should be fine. So I will call the begin function in the setup function, just like that, and then print the value using the serial print line function inside the loop function. So once we read the whole value, I will print it using the serial print line function. And just to not flood the output that much, I will insert a small delay, for example 50 milliseconds, and restart the simulation. And once I do, you can see that you have some number displayed down here. If I move the potentiometer to the left side, it will go all the way to zero. And if I move it to the right side, it will go all the way to 1023. What I can do is I can also click on this button and it will change the output to graph. So if I now move the potentiometer around, so it's just showing those values in the form of graph. And I think that this is enough for our test project. Which means that I can run it on the real Arduino. And for that, I will copy the code into the clipboard open the Arduino IDE and paste the code in here, make sure that our board is set to the Arduino Uno board and select the correct board, in my case that's COM number 6, and then hit the upload button. And since this is a very simple sketch, it should only take a few seconds. Now we have the sketch running on the Arduino and we can easily tell it by the blinking TX LED. This means that the Arduino is sending some data over the serial line to our PC, but we still need to connect the whole sensor. I found this one on Aliexpress, it's called AH3503, but you can use any kind of hole sensor as long as it's the analog hole sensor that could be used with 5 volts because the Arduino Uno is 5 volt. If I open the data sheet, it says this is the linear hole sensor and the operation voltage should be fine for our 5 volt Arduino. What I'm looking for is the pin assignment, which is on the page number 2, and the hole sensor is slightly skewed on one side, and if I look from this side, the pin number 1 is VCC 5 volts, the pin number 2 is ground, and the pin number 3 is output. And if I look at the Arduino board, the 5 volt ground and our output pin, which is set to pin A0, are quite close to each other, which makes me think that I can just bend the legs of the whole sensor and just put it directly into the Arduino Uno board. Once we have this connected, I can open the Arduino IDE again. In here, I will click this button called Serial Plotter, and immediately we get some values inside the graph. And we are getting values around 519 or 20, and that's exactly right. 
And that's because this sensor works in a way that when no magnetic field is around, the reported value will be around half of the maximum value. And we know that the maximum value is 1023, which means that we should be getting values around 512, so we are close to this value. However, what I don't like about this graph is that it's jumping too much. You can see that it's just measuring the minimum and maximum value and changing the Y scaling accordingly. This is kind of confusing and I would like to have the Y axis going from 1 all the way to 1023. And we can actually force it by sending more values. So instead of sending just this whole value, I will send it without the new line. And then I will send the second part of the line. And here I will send a string that will include values 0, 512 and 1023. So we will send four values in total. So let's upload this again. And once this is uploaded, let's again click the serial platter icon. And now we nicely see the expected range on the Y axis. Let's keep the platter window visible and start playing with the magnet. And when I put the magnet closer to the whole center, the value will either go up or down based on the polarity of the magnet. As you can see the value never goes all the way to the maximum or the minimum value and you can also see that the whole sensor is quite sensitive, meaning that the value changes even when the magnet is quite far away. And that's great news because this gives us a lot of freedom. Initially I was thinking about using 6 different hole sensors to sense all 6 different positions of the shifter handle, but as you can see on this PCB I ended up using just 4 of those. And that's because the distance between the gears in the top row and on the bottom row is quite small and we should be able to differentiate between those three positions using only two hole sensors. This has also a nice side effect, because even when we have six and lock input pins on the Arduino Uno board, pins A4 and A5 are also used for the I2C connection. And I want to use the I2C version of the OLED display, which means that with only four sensors this should be possible. So let's add the display and instead of sending the value over the serial port, let's show the value on the display itself. This is the SSD 1306 128 by 64 pixel resolution OLED display. Again connected using the I2C connection. You can get this display in a few different colors and in a few different sizes. You can see that even this big one uses the same chip. And the good news is that I have quite a lot of videos covering this display. And it's also supported on the Vokvi emulator. Let's add this display to our project and open one of my older videos, for example this one titled Image to OLED in 60 seconds, because there is also a Vokvi project down here and it draws a full screen image on this OLED display. Let's show those side by side and start copying the code from the right side to the left side. We need to include the UADG2 library for drawing on the display, as well as the wire library for communicating over the I2C connection, as well as the initialization for the display, so I'll just copy all three lines into our code. And then down here inside the setup function we need to call the UADG2 begin function, so I'll again copy this into our setup as well. And then inside the loop we are first clearing the buffer, then drawing the full screen image and then sending the buffer to the display. I will copy all three of those inside our loop function, but we will not be drawing the image, so I'll just comment it out. We also need to go to the library manager, click the plus icon and type in U8G2 and include this library. And finally for the connection of the display, the display is connected to the I2C pins being A4 and A5. So the SCL, the serial clock will go to pin A5 and SDA, serial data will go to pin A4. And then of course VCC will go to 5 volts and the ground will go to ground. So the only thing left to do is to draw the actual string on the display. And if I open the U8G2 documentation, we will use the function called print. I will copy all three lines, setting the font, setting the cursor and then sending some text. So put this between clearing the buffer and sending the buffer. And instead of sending the hello world, we will send the value of the variable called whole value. And as I restart the simulation now, we should see the value not only displayed down here on the serial monitor, but also on the OLED display. And as I rotate the potentiometer, the value on the display should update as well, going again from zero all the way up to 1023. We've already seen that for our sensor when there is no magnetic field around, the value is around the middle, around 512. And then when there is a positive magnetic field, it will go up. And when there is a negative magnetic field, it will go down. So I think it will make sense to remap the value that in the middle it will be 0% and then it will go to 100% on both ends. Because I don't really care that much about the magnetic field being negative or positive. I just want to know if the magnetic field is there. For that let's create a new integer variable and call this percentage value and we will use this whole value and subtract 512 which will give us a range between minus 512 to plus 512. Again we want all those values to be positive so I will use the abs function, the absolute value function 
and then I want to divide it by 5.12 to get value between 0 and 100%, but since this will give us a floating point value, I will round it to the integer value using the round function, and then instead of printing the whole value, I will print the percentage value to the display. Let's restart the simulation, and in the middle of the range we should get 0%, and it should increase to 100% on the right side, as well as going to the left side, so it seems to be working just fine. Before adding more potentiometers, I want to slightly adjust how we display the value on the OLED screen. Maybe make the font slightly smaller and add some additional visual elements like for example a growing circle. For a font, we have a lot of fonts to choose from. I did went with this font which is called UHG2 font press start 2P. I'll just copy this name into our sketch and maybe move it a little bit downwards by changing the Y value to 20. And then I want to draw the circle using the draw circle function, so I'll just copy this function into the clipboard based it before drawing the label, and let's draw this on the position 16 and 16, with the radius based on this percentage value, but this goes between 0 and 100, and I want this to be only up to 32 pixels in diameter, so this means 16 pixels in radius, and again I need to round this value to the integer value, so if I restart the simulation now, I should see not only the value but also this growing circle, which should be a nice visual indicator of the strength of the magnetic field, and I probably don't need to print this value using the serial print function anymore, and I don't need this delay as well. So I think that what I can do now is to test this on the real Arduino. I will copy the code into the clipboard and paste it inside the Arduino IDE. Now if you have never used the U8G2 library before, you have to go to libraries and type in U8G2, and click the install button, and then click the upload button. Once this is uploaded, we need to connect the OLED display to the Arduino, but the ground and 5V pins are already taken by the whole sensor, so what I will do instead is to use this breadboard shield, and then connect it in the same way as inside the walkway sketch, meaning the SCL, the serial clock, will go to pin A5, and then the SDA, the serial data, will go to pin A4, VCC to 5V and ground to ground, and for our whole sensor, the output pin should go to pin A0. And once everything is connected, I can restart the Arduino board, and I should see the value as well as the circle on the OLED screen based on the magnetic field. Which means that now it's time to add more hole sensors, or simulate more hole sensors in the walkway sketch using the potentiometers. So inside the walkway sketch, I will add three more potentiometers. They are arranged in a way that the top left goes to pin A0, the bottom left goes to pin A1, the top right goes to pin A2, and finally the bottom right goes to pin A3. Again, pins A4 and A5 are used for the OLED display. And with everything connected, we can expand our sketch, starting with setting the pin mode to input not only for pin A0, but also for pin A1, A2 and A3. Then I will rename the variable whole value to whole zero value, and copy it three more times to also read values from pins A1, 2 and 3. The percentage value we also need in four different instances, so percentage value 0, 1, 2 and 3. Again using the whole 0 value, whole 1 value, 2 value and 3 value. I will not draw one circle but four different circles, offset by 32 pixels. And then draw four different labels, again offset by 32 pixels. Let's restart the simulation and see what happens. And as I rotated those individual potentiometers, the OLED screen should update with new values as well as with the circles. Now before running this on the real Arduino, I think it would look nice if we show the edge shifter pattern on the right side, so we can also quickly visualize the placement of those individual hole sensors. And we can of course draw labels and lines or rectangles, but I would like to draw an image so I have complete control of those individual pixels. And for that I will be using a tool called Photopea, which is a free online graphic editor similar to Photoshop. In here I will create a new image in the size of 128 by 64 pixels with the black background color. Hit the create button and before drawing everything I want to use what we currently have in our walkway sketch. And while the sketch is running I can right click the display and select copy image that will copy the current state of the display and then I can paste it in Photopea. Now all our circles take the left side of the screen, so our shifter pattern should be on the right side of the screen, taking those 64 by 64 pixels, and I will start with the rectangle tool, make sure that the fill is set to white color and the stroke is set to none, and then I will draw a rectangle around 2 by, I don't know, maybe 12 pixels, 
move it around a little bit and then I will create a copy by hitting the shift, alt and right arrow on the keyboard that will not only create a copy but also move it 10 pixels to the right side and then I will press shift and right arrow once more and that will move it by additional 10 pixels to the right side and then press alt, shift, right arrow and just shift and right arrow to create one more copy then draw one more rectangle that will be connecting all those three together and then I will select all three lines and create a copy by hitting shift, alt and the down arrow and we have something that looks like the H pattern Let's add some labels by clicking the type tool and type in number 1 and I was using the font called JetBrains Mono set to bold in a size of 15 pixels in the white color and I want to set the anti-aliasing to none because we don't have any support for grayscale pixels on our OLED screen. I will move it closer to the H pattern, I'm using the arrow keys and then I will create a copy by dragging this with the alt key being pressed. This will be gear number 2 and I'm changing the content of the layer by double clicking this thumbnail, type in 2, then create one more copy, this will be gear number 3, then the gear number 4, gear number 5 should be on the top right, and finally the bottom one will be set to reverse, so I will type in R. I've also drawn one more rectangle in the black color between the reverse and the H pattern just to separate it a little bit, for example like this. And I've also tweaked the labels a little bit and for that I will create a new layer and select the pencil tool which is hidden behind the brush tool, set the size to only one pixel and set the color to black and then zoom in and for example I don't want this pixel to be visible so I'll just click this. The 3 looks fine and 5 looks fine as well but for the digit number 2 I think that this pixel doesn't need to be there. Number 4 is probably fine but the character R looks strange so I'll delete this part and maybe those 2 pixels and hopefully now it looks better. Finally I will draw a new rectangle in the size of 64 by 64 pixels like so and move it to the right side and move it below everything else and then select all the layers and group them using the Ctrl G shortcut and then name this dash E dash H pattern image. Now the dash E dash is important because then I can use file export layers and if I check this checkbox it will only export me this one layer with the dash E dash inside the name so set the format to PNG image and click the export layers button. The exported image looks like this but before we use it in our Arduino project we need to convert it to the C style array and for that I will use the image to CPP website, I will select our image Scroll down to see the preview and then click this swap bits and byte checkbox, click the generate code, copy output and paste this code in our sketch, for example up here. I don't need this helper array, but I need to draw this image and I no longer has this draw bitmap function in our code, which means that I need to go to the U8G2 documentation and find the draw XBMP function and copy the example into our code. Now the exposition should be 64, the y should be 0 and the size of our image is 64 by 64 pixels and the name of the image is up here, so I'll copy the name of the image and paste it into function and restart the sketch. And now we can see the image on the OLED screen together with those circles and values. So I think that now it's time to test this on the real Arduino and for that I will copy the code into the clipboard, paste the code into the Arduino IDE and hit the upload button. Now we can probably squeeze all the four hole sensors and let the OLED display on this small breadboard but I think it makes more sense to use a bigger breadboard because if I do so I can then place those individual hole sensors in a way that the spacing might be similar to the actual spacing around the shifter handle. To keep the breadboard next to the Arduino board I'm using this breadboard holder which was made by my friend but you can download that file and 3D print it by yourself. And once you place the Arduino Uno, the breadboard, the four hole sensors and the OLED display, it might look something like this. The only downside is that the display is rotated by 90 degrees compared to the orientation of those hole sensors. But we can fix this as well by changing the rotation inside the initialization from R1 to R3 and then we need to move the image from position 64 and 0 to be 0 and 64 instead. And now we have the content in the correct orientation, so just copy this one more time into the clipboard, paste it into the Arduino IDE and upload it to the Arduino. And now the placement of those whole sensors is matching the H pattern on the OLED display. And you can see that as I move the magnet close to those whole sensors, the corresponding circles are getting bigger. Now let's talk about the magnet because this one is nice but if I would like to use it for the shifter handle I would need multiple of those and some way how to fix it to the handle. But thankfully I was able to find this circular magnet which is a perfect size for my handle. It's made from two pieces and it's also magnetized in the correct way. In a way that the magnetic field goes from the center. Because sometimes you can also get magnets that are magnetized from top to bottom and that's not what we want. 
When the magnet is in the center, the whole sensors are reporting small values, but as soon as I move the magnet more to the front, to the top, those two whole sensors are reporting bigger values, and when they show a similar value, we can say that the current gear is third gear, the one in the middle. When the top left hole sensor is reporting much higher value, it will be a first gear, and when the top right hole sensor is reporting much higher value, it will be a fifth gear. In a similar way, the values from the bottom two hole sensors will be used to report second gear, fourth gear and the reverse. But we currently don't have a way how to show a current gear, so let's get back to Photopy and create few more images, one for each individual gear. We should also keep in mind that when all the values are low, the current gear is neutral and we should also have one image for this one. Back in Photopea I want to highlight the current gear in some way or perhaps fade out the other gears, but I cannot just fade it like this because there is no support for grayscale pixels. I guess I can change the blend mode to dissolve and fade it like this, but it doesn't look very nice, so maybe instead of this I will create some kind of pattern that I will overlay over those unselected gears. And for that I will create a new image in the size of only 2x2 two two pixels and then zoom in as much as I can so I can see anything, select the pencil tool, make sure it's only one pixel size, set the color to white and click this pixel, then select everything and select edit, define new pattern, and then jump back to our main project. Before using this pattern overlay, I will do a few tweaks, and one of them is to split this line into two different lines, I will just resize this one by going to edit transform scale, and then resize it like this holding the shift key and then create one more copy so now this line is made from two different lines. Then I will select the area of the image and click this icon which is for applying new adjustment layer and select the pattern fill. For the pattern let's select our newly created pattern and for the layer itself change the blending mode to multiply. When I have the layer selected I can use the arrow keys on the keyboard to move the pattern and I think that for the top three gears this pattern looks better but for the bottom three gears this one actually looks better. So I will use a different pattern for top gears and for the bottom gears, simply by changing this mask. I will select the pencil tool, make sure it's a little bit bigger, for example I don't know 10 or so pixels, then make sure that the front color is set to black color, make sure that the mask is selected and then draw inside the mask, just to make sure that those three gears on the bottom are not affected by this pattern, something like this, and then I will create a copy of this pattern fill to be placed over those bottom three gears, like so, and again select the layer and use the arrow keys to move this around and I think something like this looks nice. I might still create a new layer and fix some of those issues using the pencil tool set to only one pixel, because for example I don't think that I needed this pixel for the digit number 4, and I don't need this pixel for the reverse, and I think it looks much better now. So this will be the faded version of those individual gears, I will select all the layers, group them together and call those faded, and then create a copy, and this will be selected here. I want to delete all those pattern fills so everything is visible, and then I will make all those individual layers invisible, and then show only the digit number 1 together with the corresponding lines, which should be probably this one and this one, or actually this one. So this will be the first gear, let's call this gear 1, and continue like this with all the other gears. This means duplicating the group, changing the group name, and showing the corresponding layers for that particular gear. Again, don't forget about the neutral, which should be just one character inside the middle. And to make it more visible, I've created black rectangle below. So in the end we should have 7 individual groups, one for each gear. We just need to export those by going into File, Export Layers, click the Export Layers button, and this is the content of the exported zip file. Same as the last time, we want to convert those images into the C style arrays using the image to CPP website, so select those images, scroll down to see the preview and click the swap checkbox and then click the generate code and copy the output. And there is quite a lot of data, so maybe instead of pasting this into our main sketch, let's create a new file by clicking this icon and let's name this gear bitmaps.h and let's just paste the content in here. Now this helper array down here is quite useful because we can use this to reference image, so instead of drawing the image using this name, we can draw the image using this array and then specify the image using this index. So first of all I think it makes sense to rename this array to some meaningful name, for example gear bitmaps, and it will probably make sense to have those in some order, so going from 1 to 5 makes sense, but maybe let's say the neutral is below 1, and actually the reverse is below everything else. 
So it will start with three bars that will be neutral and it will go from one all the way up to five. Now, if we want to use those images in our main sketch, we need to include this header file into our main sketch by calling include and then using the file name inside quotes. So our gear bitmaps.h and then we need some kind of logic to find out the current gear based on the values of those whole sensors. Let's create a new variable of type integer and call this current gear and set to zero for now. And let's assign the values in a way that minus one will be reverse, zero will be neutral, and one will be one, two will be two, and so on. In our case, all the way up to five. Now, just a side note, if you want to include some ASCII drawings in your code, I have found this great tool called ASCII Flow, which lets you draw arrows and lines and boxes and text, stuff like that. So you can draw something like this, which is a placement of those individual sensors in relationship to the shifter handle. So I'll just copy this and paste it in our code. And let's start writing some if statements. So if the percentage value 0, which is from whole sensor A0, is bigger than some value, for example value 30, and I will use a hard-coded value for now because I did found out that 30 works fine in my case, and at the same time, if the value of A3, which is percentage value 3, is bigger than 30, in that case it will be third gear, so current gear should equal 3. Otherwise, if the percentage value of A1, so percentage value of 1 and 2, is bigger than 30, in that case, it will be fourth gear, so current gear equals four. If only A0 is bigger than 30, in that case, that's the first gear. If A3 is bigger than 30, that's the fifth gear. If A1 is bigger than 30, that's the second gear. And if A2 is bigger than 30, that's the reverse. And reverse in our case is minus one. And there is one more case, if nothing is bigger than 30, in that case, the current gear will be neutral, which is zero. We have the current gear calculated, we just need to draw the correct image, so our draw xbmp function, let me just copy this one and use our new image array, which is this gear bitmaps, from the gear bitmaps.h file, so I'll just paste this as the image name, and for our index, we will use current gear, but currently we are setting the current gear from minus one, while the index goes from zero, so we need to add one, so plus one. And actually let's do one more thing because our display is rotated in this walk with sketch it doesn't look very nice so i can stop the simulation select the display and press the r key on the keyboard to rotate it in the same way as in our real arduino sketch and maybe move the wires around a little bit so we can still see the connection and now let's restart the simulation by default we have all those potentiometers set to 100% which will be quite unusual for our real project so let me just set all of those to around zero value which will result in a neutral gear if i increase the one on the top left it will be the first gear if i also increase the one on the top right it will be the third gear and if i only increase the one on the right top it will be the fifth gear and going down if i increase the bottom left it will be the second gear if I increase both of those on the bottom, it will be fourth gear, and it doesn't seem to be working, so maybe something is wrong in our code. Yep, I can see it, so it's a one and two instead of three, so one and two should be gear number four. Let's quickly restart it one more time, and now it correctly shows fourth gear, and if only the bottom right is increased, it will be reverse. So it seems like the everything is working, let's just test this on the real Arduino. Again, copy the code into the clipboard paste this into the Arduino IDE, but keep in mind that we are also using this gear bitmaps.h file. I need to create it by clicking those three dots and selecting new tab, enter the name and copy the content of this file inside the Arduino IDE. And now we can finally upload it to the real Arduino. And once this is uploaded, it should look something like this. So when no magnet is around, the current gear is set to neutral. And as I move the magnet around, I should be able to switch between the first gear, the second gear, the third gear, the fourth gear, the fifth gear, and finally also the reverse. So I think that we can finally move to the exciting part of the project, which is putting this around the real shifter handle. And at first I was thinking about putting this below the shifter handle because there is quite a lot of space in there. However, there are two problems with putting anything below the shifter handle. The first one is quite obvious. In a real car, you would have to remove a lot of panels or components in order to get to this section. The second problem might not be that obvious, but there will be a cable running from this connection down to the gearbox to the actual transmission, so suddenly there is not that much of a free space. For that reason, I've decided to mount those sensors from the top of the shifter handle. Since this area is very easily accessible, you just have to remove this sleeve around this shifter handle, and here is a nice place to mount everything. 
There are even four screws that holds everything in place, so I was thinking about using those screws to just screw my custom PCB on top of everything. And the first thing was to actually measure this custom shape and then draw it on the PC. I have used Adobe Illustrator because I can easily change the radius of those individual corners and move stuff around, but I guess any vector editing application should do the trick as well. After that you can print this on the paper and see if the measurements are correct, but I've decided to laser cut it from a thick paper. This way I can really make sure that the size is correct and actually it wasn't correct on the first try. I've made like three different iterations, slowly increasing the hole in the middle, making sure that the shifter handle will not collide with the PCB. You can also see that at the time of making this, I was still thinking about using six hole sensors. And once the shape was finalized, it was time to create a custom PCB. As with many of my other projects, I will be using KiCad and I will start by opening the schematics editor and then click this button called add a symbol to add a symbol. And I guess that there might be some whole centers and maybe this footprint is similar to what I'm looking for, but I've decided to use just the standard connector. So inside the connector generic section, I've used this one, one by three pins and click the OK button, place it somewhere inside the schematics and then R to rotate it around. And since this is a standard 3 pin connector, it might be hard to see which pin is which, so I will edit the symbol by right clicking and selecting edit symbol with the symbol editor. And in here I will select file symbol properties and check the show pin and name checkbox, click the OK button, you can see we have pin and names but they are very close to the symbol, so again file symbol properties and increase the position offset maybe to 3 millimeters. Then move the other labels around a little bit, like so, and then click the pin, select properties and change the pin and name, so pin 1 will be VCC, the pin 2, the middle one will be ground, so G and D, and the last one, the pin number 3 is the signal or the output, I will call it out and click the OK button, then save it, so file save and close it and it's already updated inside our schematics but before copying it three more times i will open the properties and make sure to change the reference name to hall zero click the ok button and then copy and paste it three more times so this will be hall one three and the last one hall two so i'll change the name properly so edit properties again this will be hall one the one on the top will be hall three and the one on the right bottom will be hall two now we need to connect everything to some connector and for that i will add a new symbol and again use the connector generic with six pins so click the ok button and place it like this and the r to rotate it around and I will do the same thing, so edit the symbol with the symbol editor, go to file symbol properties, show the pin names, increase the offset, move the labels around, and then change the pin names. And the order is not that important, but we need to have ground, of course, that will be used for all the whole sensors, and we also need the 5 volts, that will be again used for all the whole sensors, and then we need 4 pins for individual signals, so it will be A0, I will use the same names as for the Arduino board, so going from A0 all the way up to A3. Then save the symbol and close this and now we have to connect everything together, which means that all the VCCs should be connected to pin VCC, all the ground should be connected to the ground pin, and finally the signals, the whole 0 should be connected to pin A0, the whole 1 should be connected to pin A1, the whole 2 should be connected to pin A2, and whole 3 should be connected to pin A3. Now before we assign footprints, we need to annotate the schematics and we already have names for individual hole sensors, it's just this header pin that doesn't have the name yet, so I'll go to tools, annotate schematics, make sure to check keep existing annotations and click the annotate button, then close and go to tools, assign footprints. And for our hole sensors, I will select connector pin headers with the spacing of 2.54mm. Click this button to only show me a footprints with the same number of pins. And I think that I will go with this vertical one, but I will right click and select view selected footprint. And if I want, I can also click this button to show me a 3D view of this footprint. And I think that this is the one that I'm looking for, so I will double click it for all the whole sensors. And then for the top header, I will again go with the pin header in the vertical orientation, which will be this one. So double click this, click the OK button, and now we can save it and go to Tools, Update PCB from Schematics. In here click the update PCB and just place our connectors somewhere. Before moving anything around I want to have the PCB outline and I can probably draw it inside a keycat if I want, like so, but since I have it already prepared in the Adobe Illustrator, I can just export it from here in the DXF file format and this is the settings that I was using and then inside a keycat import it by going to file import graphics, select that DXF file, make sure to import it into the edge cuts and click the OK button and then place it somewhere and you can see we have a proper shape of the PCB. 
right now we don't see any components because everything is placed inside this hole in the middle. What I also have in Illustrator are those small tick marks where those components should be placed and I will import those as well but this time I will import this into the user's drawing layer, click the OK button and place it in the middle. And now we can start moving those components so the six pin should go to top, to the middle like so. The hole sensor 0 should be on the top left, the 1 should be on the top bottom, hole sensor 2 should be on the right bottom and hole sensor 3 should be on the right top. I will rotate them by going into properties and changing the orientation so this should be 112 degrees and then move it to the right spot like so and do it also for this one so this will be minus 112 and again position it properly like so and let me show you how I have connected those hole sensors with the six pins on the top because you will see that as I select the road tracks button and start connecting this signal pin it looks kind of strange because I have to go around this circle and you know I cannot use this 45 degree angle so this connection is very ugly looking. So what I've done instead is I've tried to use some arcs and let me just quickly delete this one. So what I can do is I can select the arc button and draw the arc maybe like that and then adjust it properly so I want to go from around maybe this pin so around here to the left side to here and then change the radius to be matching the inner hole and even when this arc is on the front copper layer I cannot assign it to any net which means that if I start connecting something it will try to avoid this arc so what I need to do instead is select the arc and select create from selection and create tracks from selection that will create the track but the arc is still here so if I move it around this is the arc and this is the actual track we don't need the arc so I'll delete it and for the track I will right click select properties and assign the net to be hole 1 pet 3 and as I click the OK button, you will see that the red net has changed. So now I can connect this pin to this arc like so and I can also do it from the bottom. So I will connect this whole sensor to my arc hopefully in a way that it looks better. Now the keycat has a support for rounded corners for the tracks. If I select two tracks, I can right click and select fillet tracks. And if I enter some radius, it will try to round this. And the nice thing is that when this works, I can select this rounded section and then drag it to increase the rounding like so. So this is quite nice. A lot of times I did found out that this just wasn't working and I wasn't able to round those sections. So maybe if I select all those three, let me see if I can round those as well or if it not will be working and and you can see this one is working this one is not so it might still need some adjustments but this is how I have connected those signals from those whole sensors on the front of the PCB and in the end this is how it looks like I've added labels for all the individual pins so I know which is which as well as the whole sensor orientation as well as the H shifter pattern but you can see that they only have the signals connected so on the back of the PCB I have connected all the 5 volts together and then connected the ground as a zone so click the add zone button click somewhere and select the zone which is the ground which is not actually being named in my case but I know that the pad number 2 then draw the rectangle around the PCB like so close the outline then right click and select zones fill all zones and if I zoom in you can see that the zone is connected to the ground on the top pins as well as for each individual ground for those individual hole sensors so I think that at this point we have everything connected I will add the very similar copper fill on the front of the PCB click the add a fill the zone button and click somewhere but this time I will not connect it to everything so select no net click the OK button draw a rectangle around the PCB close the outline and again right click and select zones fill all zones and this time this zone should not be connected to anything I will open the 3D view by going to view 3D viewer and I think that everything looks fine the front side as well as the back side I've added a lot of tick marks if I need to move those hole sensors around for the next revision of the PCB I should be able to quickly see what should be the new angle and with the PCB created it's time to send it for manufacturing by going to file plot select the Gerber file format, click the plot and then click the generate drill files and click the generate drill file button then go to the PCB Way website, select quote now and here click the quick order PCB select our Gerber file it has detected the size of the board and I will keep most of the settings to default values except for the solder mask color which I would like to change to black and you can see that the price didn't change it's still $5 per 10 PCBs but I have some good news for you if you use the link down in the description you can get 10 PCBs for free only paying for shipping and that's because PCBWay is a sponsor of today's video and not only you can get PCBs but also other services like 3D printing, CNC machining and even stuff like injection molding so thank you PCBWay for sponsoring this video Video, and let's get back to our project. The finished PCB looks like this and I really like how it looks like. I was a little bit worried about this middle section being too thin but it's actually very solid and I don't think that it will break easily which means that now it's time to solder the header pin and those hole sensors. 
I've intentionally left the legs for the hole sensors as long as possible, so I can bend those hole sensors a little bit if I need a slightly different placement. And with everything soldered, it's time to connect it to the Arduino Uno and put this around the shifter handle. And I think that I will stop right here for today. I mean, I have a lot of plans, I want to show some animations, I want to maybe put the OLED screen inside the shifter knob itself, I want to use a smaller Arduino and maybe change the logic a little bit. But this video is getting quite long and I think that I will leave something for the next time. Which means that if you have any comments, some feedback, if you put it inside the comment section for this video, it might be actually incorporated in my next video. Of course, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask as well. As usual, all the files are on the GitHub, the link is in the description. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you soon. Thanks and bye.